All right. Welcome, everybody, to yet another episode of the Journey to Happy podcast. Today is a special day, my friends. I am here with a really good friend of mine. And her and I went for coffee a couple of weeks ago, and we were having this conversation. How do you make new friends? How do you stay connected to the old friends that you do have? How do you cultivate friendships? And uh, we decided that we were going to postpone our conversation and instead have it here in in the podcast so that everybody gets to benefit from what two friends talking to each other sound like. And so I want to welcome you, uh, Lucy, to the podcast and I want to introduce you to everybody. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself in a moment, but for for you guys uh, to know, Lucy Bakioki is a mom. She's a wife. She's an incredible human in anything and everything that she does. It's just uh, somebody I admire fully as a mom, as a professional, and as a wife. So inspiring in so many ways. So humble. uh, So giving. All the things, all the reasons why she's my my friend, period. I claim her as my friend because she's got nothing but uh, just so much so much humanity in her heart and everything that she does. So I am so thrilled that you get to have a bit of my friend with you today. And Lizzie, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is, uh, as Olga was saying, Lucy, I'm back here, okay. Um I've been a mom now for nine and a half years and I have three children. Um, I've been friends with Olga for a little over 10 years. Um, And um, I'm a mom, a mother, and also an educator. Um, I've had uh, multiple different uh, jobs. And I think as I'm getting older, um, and because uh, I choose what I do very carefully, because I am a mom and because I want to maintain good friendships, but also be a really good wife at the same time, because I feel like they're all so um, for me, uh, I'm French, so there will be a bit of an accent. Uh, But we met, I met Olga at at work, actually, when we were working uh, for the Children's Aid Society. Um, And we just click on different level, like we had a lot of the same interest. we also had a few friends um, in common, or I would say co-workers in common. Um, but I think our friendship um, is still going strong because of the connectivity, which is, uh, we have a lot in common, a lot of the same uh, perspective uh, on life. And um, I feel like we've been gift of this friendship to nurture and to bloom together and we do nurture it and what i want to say uh to anybody listening is that we we became friends as adults and so i don't know if any of you listening uh, are living in a circumstance where maybe you were separated from the people that you grew up with or you you know you've moved places that's so common i'm mostly talking to all my immigrants but also many of us may have travel places because of work and we kind of lose like our longest rooted friendships and and we have this tendency to think that making friendships in adulthood is really hard and I'm not gonna lie it's way harder than when you play in the schoolyard and you know you see these children every day nonetheless it's possible and you can form really strong friendships with people that you didn't know from way back then and in a way Lucy I feel like we'd known each other way back then like I was shocked to know that Donnie was born nine years ago <laughs> Your first child, yeah. like what? Yes. He's gonna be not, he's gonna be ten. What the heck? And that feel like so like it just happened. And at the same time, when you said we've been friends for ten years, I'm like that's it because I feel that I've known you so for so long, and I've known you as a coworker, but really friendships, I I, I as a friend, I know. Um, and so it's so interesting. Um, uh, oh my god, I was gonna call you Sophie. Yeah. Lucy is a twin but that's not why I was gonna say what I was gonna say was is that you're a mom to three babies and you had it really hard for a while because you had three under three at some point and somehow still manage all things and that I think that's when my biggest admiration began for you is when you had three babies under three that was those were some crazy times yeah and, and again I think I feel 
blessed to be able to 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 be a mom uh and um it's something i cherish and i think it's something that you need to feel blessed every day because uh, if you like it's going to bring up a lot more if you do appreciate it and if you nourish it and if you live in the in the present it's the same thing when we met for coffee last week some of the memories on facebook was you visiting uh flynn my the, the last baby and so it's it's all these things that friendship brings its memories but also to know that there's always somebody there um you're gonna make me to, cry again <laughs> that's okay <laughs> By the way, at coffee two weeks ago, we were both crying. I think that everybody in the coffee place must have thought that we were <laughs> just like grieving something, but we were just talking about the power, the power of friendship and how much is needed. So I'm interrupting just to say that. No, and but I think it transpires and like you know, I, I've said that before, but it transpires in every aspect of your uh, of your life. And you need like there's certain things I would share with you. Uh, because you're also a mother, but because, you know, but you're, we're also friends. I think there's different things that we can connect on different levels uh, than your partner or, you know, um, your family. Uh, so I think that's, that's the beautiful thing about uh, friendship. You know, there's also friendship that have come, you know, we mentioned that we've been friends since adulthood. Um, there's not too many friends that when I grew up, I still, we're still, if I would see them, of course I would be happy. And, um, some of the people I would still con connect and have some type of conversation, but also friendship, it's part of growing up and becoming an adult and they change as our, um, our life gets busier. Um, and we've had this discussion, but it doesn't mean that you can't make the time. You know, sometimes we talked about, uh, and part of the reason why we got emotional that day is because, yeah, I am a mother of three, and sometimes people just assume that I'm just too busy. And to say that, yeah, I may not, and my answer to that was to you, this is what I said, and it's true. Yeah, I may not pick up right away because I might be doing something because I try, I deeply try to be in the moment with my children. So if I'm doing something important, I'm not going to pick up. Or if I'm in the car, I'm not going to pick up because my kids are there and I don't feel it's fa fair for the other person unless it's really important and whatever. But I'm always going to call back. And sometimes the universe is telling us, hey, that person's calling, calling you and I will call back. And, and it's also a message of, hey, I haven't spoken to you in a while. Like, you know, let's connect. Or, you know, it's important to, to feel that connectivity and, and to, to, to feel like, you know, we, there's people that might say, oh, well, you haven't called, I'm not going to call. Well, again, it's, it's, it's whatever you choose. Um, and for us, we've always, always been there, especially for important events or, but I'm always a call away. And I've said that to you, you know, like it's one of those things, like if Olga calls, of course, I'm going to be calling back because, because you're important to me and I value your friendship. Personally, um, I feel it's important to value my friendship. And I used to have a lot more friends or different groups of friends. Like I used to play a lot of sports. I used to have more friends at work. I used to have more friends. Um, I also have like when you're in a relationship, of course, you're going to be the friends of that relation, the, the, the relationship, because it connects you um, the same thing with family. But um, it, so you choose carefully, I think, as you get older, more carefully, who you spend the time with or who you wish to actually um, donate your time to. And I'm not saying it's a t give and take because it's not. I don't feel like a friendship. It's a give and take. It's an like you know. It's obviously being kind and uh, wanted to spend time uh, with that person, whether it's on the phone or you know uh, in person. But you know, I even had a discussion with my husband about that. Like sometimes our friendship have changed too because our kids have a lot of activities. So sometimes you need you have to as a parent. Um, cherish some of those friendships. I'm not, my kids are in three organized activity and no, I'm not going to be able to attend all these things. So you rely sometimes on each other to be, uh, for them to be able to attend everything. So there's that too, right? I, so I want to give people a bit of context that 
we've been friends for 10 years. We used to work in the same building. And so it was so easy to just pop into each other's desk and be like, how's it going? What's happening? And then do something on the weekend and we'll see each other. And then, uh, and then we, we didn't, <laughs> I opened August way. I moved to my own practice. Uh, you went on mat leave, like life happens and it happens to everybody. Right. So we, we can all think of a friend where we might've uh, due to convenience, been able to see a lot and then life happens and we kind of stop. And so I've, I'm going to title this podcast, how to make new friends. Because that was a conversation we were having two weeks ago while we were having coffee, because your son asked you that question and you were like, shit, what do I tell him? And I thought when we we were talking about the things that you would have told him, the things that you and I were realizing, like we, we came into this coffee to meet after the last time we had seen each other would have been the summer before. So maybe a year before, right? Or not this summer, early this summer, early spring. No, I saw you in the spring. Yeah. Yeah. We so early in the spring. And before that, God knows because of COVID, like it might have been COVID. years, right? Like, but uh, so when we saw each other in the spring, we're like, yes, we're out of COVID insanity. Let's just hug. And like, we went for lunch and we had fun. We went shopping. We had fun. It wasn't emotional, but two weeks ago, it was very emotional. And I remember you say like, I was so emotional to co- coming to see you. And I'm like, me too. And we just let our emotions go <laughs> because it had been so long that we had dedicated any time for ourselves to feel held by a friend, to go for coffee. Like I have so much shit to tell you or I'm experiencing so much shit. I need somebody to hear it. And I don't want it to be my husband or my sister or anybody else, but like a good friend who can side with me. And so we were like, yeah, and it's- crying and then we went to this question of Donnie asking you how do you make new friends and we were like why is that is we're only seeing each other once once every six months what's happening here so we're gonna dive into that but you had a thought I want I want to know what you were gonna say well and to to that response was like I felt I needed to put myself in his shoes and I think that those discussions need to start exactly when you're little like when you're nine years old so, and the reason why he said that it's because he moved into a class this year that he didn't have connections in his perspective. And I'm always putting myself in their shoes. He didn't have a strong connection with the kids he had in the class. And he was like, I'm like, okay, well, you're going to go to school tomorrow and you're going to make new friends. So it's, we have to be careful sometimes and choosing the wording again of how we talk to our children and people around us. So I took a step back and I, you could tell that I was thinking and I said, well, how do you think that you could make friends? Like how, what would be a good way of, for you to, to, to make friends? So he started listing a few things like, but he was like, well, and, but then he kept emphasizes that I don't know. I don't know. Cause I don't have any friends. So, and I said, well, it starts with a conversation sometimes. I think, you know, that's, that's the key here to keep it simple, very casual with our children to say, well, why don't you start having a conversation? And then he was like, well, what can I talk about? I don't know. I said, why don't you ask if he has, um, who lives with them? You know, does he have any pets? Or if you simply want to talk about you. And sometimes when you talk about you, that opens a different conversation about them. And then with that comes, you know, connections and, you know, uh, common grounds and come things that you have in common, whether it's sports or uh, my eldest is very uh, athletic and loves sports. So, and some of the, the thing, kids in the class actually are, are not. So I think that's where he was struggling to, to be like, well, who am I going to hang out in the class? But then I, again, I explore further with him. And I said, well, there's different times in the day where you can make friends, whether it's at recess. And you'll see the friends that you connect more at recess. So this is how the conversation kind of started. And that's why I was getting emotional because I was like going to the coffee shop because I was like, I need more of this. And I, I, a lot has to do with obviously COVID and, our, and everybody kind of like um, shifted, but it's also making the time and making sure that we connect with those uh, people because it does nourish your soul. It, it does make you a better 
caring. And to talk about, you know, we were on the phone one day and Mateo was doing something and and it was dangerous. And, and I said, well, actually, Elsa was doing that. And then I had an idea. Then you presented that to your to Mateo. So it just explains to you that sometimes just having those little conversation with friends can actually help you in so many different ways um, in your life, you know? So, yeah, I side with that. And that was brilliant for anybody who's toddler is wanting to undo your seatbelt or his seatbelt on their high, ch- on their, my God, I can't speak, on their car seat. Show them a video of what happens to babies who don't have a car seat. Problem solved. <laughs> Matteo now actually asked me if I have the car, the, the belt on. Okay, but uh, following this, I I think that got us to the first step. So I want people listening to this episode to walk away with an idea of how do I make new friends. I was just I just coach for a full weekend a group of former clients, and that that was one of one of my clients' goals is to uh, create and maintain new friendships. So she lives uh, where she lives now is out of out of where she grew up and where she would have her most like closer circle of people. And she's a mom and she's fun and she wants to have people and she wants to not feel like all of her life is just work and children and whatever, you know, like that we have friends. So I want to explore and expand. And I also want to give you the perspective that I've had as an immigrant where all of my closest friends live outside of this country. And I have, I I am blessed to have great friends who I've made here, who I'm so grateful for. But I've also had to open my mind as to how can I maintain those friendships that I was so willing to, in my brain anyways, not forever, but in my brain was like, well, that friendship doesn't count because they're not here in my city, right? Like my last lifelong connections, I was just not connecting to because in my brain, I was thinking, well, they're so far away. We couldn't go for coffee. So what's the point of contacting them? Which in a way, I thank COVID for reconnecting me to the people because then we were all online I'm like well we might as well just have wine tonight with our friends in Colombia and just uh, and that was fun so so what I want to want us to start our like our own thoughts because it was so powerful we're like oh my god yes we were feeling lonely weren't we when we went for this coffee we were both feeling like oh my god what is it a, a me time and not me time equals a massage where it's just you alone, but me connecting to other humans, to other moms. Like just that simple suggestion of like, why don't you do what I did with my daughter? Show Mateo this one thing. And it was just so passing, so tiny of a suggestion, but like like she thought, like you said, so life-changing. It hasn't been an issue ever since. Would I have had that idea had I not spoken to somebody who's parented three children? I don't know. Because <laughs> he's my first. And He's my first. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> so I want you guys to think about how, how do you, what is your current perception of your friendships? How limited it is? What is your willingness to, how much are you thinking that you need all new friends? Like sometimes we think like, I need, I need new friends. I don't have friends. And how much of that is dismissing the friendship that you do have that like Lucy said, you're sort of you're sort of like scratching off because you assume things about like I would have assumed I had assumed I have assumed I won't call Lucy to go to the movies because she has three kids and Lucy's husband works uh, out of the country or out of the city a lot so often he's not home so in my brain I've made it that, that that's an always and so I should never even ask I limited myself from asking a friend to hang out because I assume they're too busy. And yet if somebody does that to me, I will hate it so much. <laughs> Don't scratch me off your list because I've got a son and a husband or because I live out of the city. Like just invite me and let me decide if I can join you or not. So uh, one of the concepts Lucy, that we can dive on that we spoke about, thanks to Donnie asking this brilliant question of how do you make new friends? Co- finding the common ground with people, but like obviously if you have if you like photography go into a photography class you meet people who have that same interest which is great uh, I'm a social worker I love children Lucy works as an educator like we had something in common about like the line of work we do or we used to I used to do you still mm-hmm. uh, and yet we have something in common. we like helping people we care about our community we both wanted to be moms we're both moms we both like our marriages to last forever we love our husbands like we have that kind of commonality doesn't have to be 
we're both Colombian. <laughs> doesn't have to be, we're both Catholic. We're, you know, like it doesn't have to be big major connectors, but some connectors. So if we if we were to break this into those three steps that that we were talking about, and I don't know if you recall them, I kind of do. Uh, the first one is when you're thinking about making new friendships, first of all, do you need to make new friends or is there very good friendships you might have that you just need to nourish and reach out and clean your brain from the thoughts that separate you from them. If they're too busy or I'm too busy. And that led us to, I think, step number one, which is rather than thinking, how are they going to be good friends to me? What am I going to get from this friendship? Like, what are what am I getting from them? I think is what you were going with Donnie's first thing, first point. How can I show up? as a good friend. How am I showing up as a good friend? And if I was to evaluate myself as a friend, I'm like, oh shit, I'm failing. <laughs> when was the last time I called anybody? Never. <laughs> when was the last time I reached out to somebody? Never. Um, I know you had that perception as well, Lucy, of like, how am I showing up? Who am I being? Absolutely. Absolutely. But again, it's about taking action. It's in everything. And I hear you say that a lot, Olga. If you want to make positive change in your life, you need to take action. And it's the same thing in friendship. You need to take an action. You can't wait for other people to communicate with you because, again, um, we're just assuming. So take an action and making a concrete. And then what did we do that day? We actually um, marked down a day to connect for this podcast. And we promised to each other to write it in our um, book, write it in our or whatever you use your telephone or whatever, but we need like once a month to connect and to pick up the phone because another side discussion we had that day, Olga, is that you were like, who do I call? And then I was like, well, you can call me. I want you to call me. And because I'm your friend, because I love you, because I want to spend time with you and it's okay for you to call. So I think just... um, letting people know that you're there and taking action is the most important things you can do. And since then he has made friends because I think he has started different conversation and being able to do that. And I I said also becoming a friend doesn't happen overnight, you know, Um, you know, give it a couple of weeks. um, uh, And and then you'll see um, because it's very stressful when the new school year starts, not only for the child, but for the parents, because, Mm -hmm. and sometimes our perception is actually even different than the child. The the children are very adaptable, very, uh, they have very good perspective on things too. And we forget that. And, but they adapt very well. They make new friends, they make new connections. And we can do that as adults as well. And it's like you said, you look in your circle of friends, who, who's there that, I have a strong connection that I haven't been able to connect with. And I think that's, like you said, that's a good, um, that's a good step in taking action. The same thing I discuss also like being friends with some of the uh, parents that I see on a regular uh, basis. So making the time to sometimes going, um, adding them to your phone list to be able to, Hey, are you going to the game? And then you can connect that way. So, and then that becomes more, uh, it might develop into a, a, a friendship um, later on. But simple steps can make a big difference. And especially, and I think, unfortunately, because of COVID, because it's been such a long time, it actually put us in that state of mind that it's comfortable. It's comfortable to be at home and alone, mm-hmm. you know, because, and then, but once you're out, once you're out with your friends, then you're having a great time and you don't want to come home. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're like, I don't miss anybody. I'm having a great time. You said something though that brought to mind. Uh, oh yeah, I would like you to know, like I think it's important for you yourself to know who are these friends that I already have that I could connect with when I'm like, I think that the breaking that feeling of loneliness is so important to all of us that it was like really aggravated throughout COVID. And we kind of just like really minimize the, you know, because of this idea of you can only talk to 10 people or see 10 people. We went to the bare basics of like, okay, who are the essential people? But we're not there anymore. I'm going to remind our brain. We're not there anymore. You can go yeah. out of your essential. Okay. Great that you have a husband. If you do, or like a mom or a grandma, the people that you had chosen as your essentials, 
but now we can go back to our greater circle, which are not our essential, but people that fill up our cup. So I I actually did this job and I loved it, which was writing down the list of, of my friends. I actually opened my, my cell phone. I went through my contacts and I was like, oh my God, of course I love Lucy. I love Lucy. Of course I, you know, and so I went through the list of people who I love and understanding that I can't nourish all friendships all the time, but just even having this list of my friends staring back at me and for me to on a regular basis think, have I touched base with them? What kind of friend have I been? How have I showed up? Because that's my need. My need is to have friends and to nourish them. But I think the clarity has to come from you of what's stopping you from cultivating those friendships or why has there been a gap? And like when it, I had different reasons for everybody, <laughs> but I had a reason for everybody as to why I wasn't doing it. And I think one of the reasons that I feel we were saying this, you and I, most of us have, is that we are waiting for others to take the first step. Well, if she really wants to be my friend, she would be calling me by now. But what if she's also thinking the same thing? Oh, I, I don't think she cares because I've asked her out two or three times. But And she said she's busy with her kids. But but what is what if we just do it because we want to connect with them, right? So what are the thoughts that are stopping you from nourishing those friendships? And that's when we got to point number two, which was like, or sorry, point number one, which is your job is not to show up as this is the friendship I'm looking for. Do you have it? Yes or no, take it. But how am I being that friend already myself, right? Like, so it's like I bring it inwards to you to be that friend who calls, who thinks of that person's birthday, who thinks of making that person feel like thought of, uh, who calls when she needs help. Like, okay, I need to talk to somebody. So I'm going to call when you're thinking nobody calls me. Like, who do you call? Are you calling people? Because I often feel that might be a reflection of self. Mm-hmm. Right? where we make assumptions on other people. Um, what, what else did you say about that that I wanted to... It takes time. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. If you haven't talked to that person for a couple of months, for a couple of years, and I'm sure everybody here may have experienced friendships where you don't see them for two years, you see them, and it's like no time went by. You mm-hmm. pick up right where, where you left, and we love those friendships. This is our friendship. It's like this. Um, but I think it's important for, for us to recognize that not everybody's going to feel this way. If you haven't spoken to somebody in years and then suddenly you call them, expect that they might, that it might take some time to, to like form that comfort again. And if it is a brand new friendship, that is going to take some time for you to maybe feel the discomfort of not knowing that person fully or going out for like, do you like golf or do you like coffee or what, what do we have in common? How do we make that happen and give yourself that space to make it work? Be really tolerant to the plans not happening right away. Cause I think we give up like, Oh, it's impossible to schedule something with this person. It's just so difficult. And we just move away from giving that human an opportunity of a friendship. No, I agree. And sometimes there, there, there's something, like I said, different people experience different things in the last um, a little bit. And you know what, if you grow apart, that's okay too. And I've accepted. And that's something I try to tell my children as well is that you're not going to be friends with everybody. You know, sometimes it just doesn't work out and that's okay. It could be just that uh, they just want one or two close friends, you know, even at their age, I find like some of, you know, I see them in the yard and stuff like that. And they, I kind of see where the groups are and, and that's okay. And some people, um, are, you want to play with those, the people that like to do sports, uh, the kids like to, and the ones that are more artsy play together. So there's that too, but it, it forms, I feel like at a very, very young age, because even when I became a mother, I started going to play groups because it was important. And then it wasn't about my child because my child was only a few months old, but it was also about me making new friends. And sharing, uh, you know, in my neighborhood, because I, I moved at that time, I was in the East End, and then I moved to the South End of the city. So I felt a bit isolated, and it was harder for me. I wasn't working, I had the, my child, and then I started going to play group. So it was good for me, but also for my child, because it was socializing. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we forget that socializing, friendship, um, cultivates uh, good human beings. Oh, I love that. Socializing cultivates good human beings. Write that down, people. 
I think, Lizzie, you, you spoke of something that I also feel is important. Friendships are like, the, to me, they're like a company, a companion of our different parts of life. And I think it's important to know that we're going to be presented with the opportunity, if we want to see it that way, to make new friends that are sharing our life phase, our life stage. Right? Like last summer, we went for holidays out west with our son, who was a brand new two-year-old. So specific set of needs <laughs> required at that age. And we went with a couple that we absolutely love deeply, but they didn't have a child. And so that vacation felt really different for us because we were in such different stages. As much as they love me or us and they love our son, one thing is to love us and something else is to just be on this holiday where we, we are at different stages, period. So somebody was going to, like, somebody was not going to have fun at some point, <laughs> whether that was <laughs> Mateo or me or that, <laughs> somebody at some point. And so, and, and like, now they have a kid now, we're, like, and we even talked about it after, like, you know, next time we either have to sleep in different places so that if Mateo is up really early, those who want to sleep in want, or we just do it without, like my son, like we brainstorm how to make it better. Like it was commonly, it was a common knowledge that this hadn't worked out because we were, we were, we were trying to uh, bring together two different life stages. Um, and so I think that's so important for you to consider if, if you're at a new stage in life and maybe you just need friends right at this moment that are part of this stage in which you're in. And the other aspect, I apply this to my coaching uh, relationships. And, and then I brought that, I brought in that concept to all friendships. Everything has a beginning, everything has a middle and everything has an end. And so maybe they play group friends, you know, like that was the beginning, they had a middle and then they had an end. These parents didn't continue to be your friends and that's okay. And we understand that it has an end. And some, sometimes other friendships, we have to consciously and intentionally bring them to an end or we're, we're like, we're in the middle. We have to keep this going. We're, we're liking this. Like, how do we keep it going, right? Uh, which I think is important. And, and Lucy, you've brought a word uh, often throughout which I want to highlight, I also think this is so important for authentic friendships, which is intentionality. Just don't have friends to have a large number to say that I have a large pool of people to pull from, but re being really intentional of the people you hang out with and who do you want to become friends with even intentionally? Like who are you putting, who are you willing to put all this time and effort makes that relationship that much more valuable and authentic. Because now you're putting in not just like, I don't want to be alone <laughs> energy, but you're saying like, like you, when you were talking about me just now, how you want me to call you, like how you love me. Like I had watery eyes. I felt a very intentional connection. Like I felt your love and like that, the sincerity of your words, which I don't think you could tell everybody that you meet, right? Like there is a very specific connection and an intentional connection that you've chosen me as your friend. And you see that as a privilege, you're giving me your time, gifting me your time and, and heart. And I felt that as you were saying that. So I think that there is something important in friendships. When you're feeling like people are superficially connecting to you or that is not very strong, ask yourself, how intentional are you about this friendship? And if you were to select that person as your friend, like it just maybe be in your life now accidentally, like I, we just became friends, we don't know how or when or what happened. Uh, but you, if you were to use intentionality, that perhaps you wouldn't be feeling that intentional about having this friendship. And I have a golden rule about that, but in a moment. What were you going to say? No, I completely agree. I completely agree. It has to be intentional. Like I see people around me sometimes, and you could tell the one that are friends to get something out of it, but it, it's not necessarily um, in a positive uh, way. So I think we have to be conscious about that too and teaching our children again that there needs to be um it need to be authentic because if it's not authentic then obviously it's not gonna and they do get hurt like don't get me wrong and they don't understand like there's friendship in the past where I'm like why was I friends with them but like you said it served a purpose at that uh -huh. time uh -huh. so and we have to just like you know it's okay to move on um you know we have a as you get older, you have less and less time for the for opportunities just because of activities and different things. But the friendship that are authentic will always, no matter what, be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
And and I, I I mean, if you're a client of mine, you would have heard me teach on authenticity. I'm a big fan of authenticity. I believe that's what makes French relationships last in a healthy way. When we give ourselves permission, when we intentionally say, I am just going to be who I am. I'm going to show up as best me. So I often say, my friends will call me if they want a sincere, honest opinion about something because they know I won't sugarcoat anything. I'm going to tell you exactly what my thoughts are. I'm, I won't tell you what I think you want to hear if my opinion was different. And there is a lot of freedom that comes with choosing to just be me versus like, oh, what would Lucy want me to say? So I encourage you to have those, to have the courage to show up authentically into your friendships. And by doing so, you give permission to them to be authentically who they are. And if that drives you apart, they're not your people anyways, right? Like they were not intended to be. So I wanted to share my golden rule for that kind of friendships is, for friendships anyways, is if I go for a coffee with Lucy and I come home and I'm complaining beginning to end to my husband, or I call them other Lucy, Lucy too. And I'm like, oh my God, you should have heard her. I went out for coffee with a friend and she had such a bad attitude. And she was so annoying. And she, blah. if that is who I am, right after meeting these friends, that to me is an indicator that I do not enjoy this friendship, that this isn't a friendship for me. And I piss out. Like, that's it. For me, that's my telling that I'm not, I'm not being a good friend. I'm already talking about this person. I'm already being like annoyed by this person. So that's my cue. And I stay so faithful to that. And so those are the, the people that I would limit in my life in terms of like, I won't dedicate any of my precious coffee hours <laughs> to go be with somebody who's, who, who I am not going to enjoy that meeting as much. And I'm going to come back home to be uh, a nagging human, a complaining human versus when I come back from coffee with you or when I come back from my yoga class with uh, my friend Sadia and I am just like sunshine. <laughs> you see me and I'm like, Ah, the world is such a beautiful place. I'm so happy. My life is perfect. Dreams would ask me, how was coffee? And I, I had like, I have a one word tip. I don't, I don't have to process anything. I don't have anything to get off my chest. It was good. And my, my heart is so filled. And my only thought is I need to do this more often. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Those are my people. Those are the people I keep. And I'm like, I like this feeling. Great. I'm going to keep it versus like, Oh, I'm going to have to tell Lucy to not talk to me about her problems. Like, no, that's nonsense. If I'm going to have to go that far, I, I don't have the time. No, and I agree. And I agree with, with being yourself. And if you go out and it's just negative, then maybe it's time to, again, look at more friendships that are going to bring positivity. Uh, and maybe it's just a matter of like, you're in a different place in your life. You've grown, uh, you're more mature and you're looking for, that authenticity uh, into somebody else. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's just a matter of that. And we feel as a society or as a person that we need to explain everything. I can honestly say at 43 that I'm very comfortable and I don't feel like I need to justify everything anymore. When I was younger, yes. But now, no, it is what it is. There, there's, there's, there doesn't need to be like um, an answer or a why. It just sometimes it's just it, it's just not there. And, and I and I think that's a good point. We don't have to break up with the person. Like I don't have to tell no. this person like I'm breaking up with you because your friendship is heavy on me and because I'm being a shitty friend anyways because I'm just going to talk bad about you. I just don't call her as often, <laughs> like or ever. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so you, yeah, I, I I like that. I, you need to explain it to anybody if it makes sense to you. Move on. It made sense to you. What was the second point that we talk about making new friends? Do you remember? Uh, making, the well, we, making the time? Yes, ma making the time. Um, that was one of the biggest, the intensity, the intensity, like being, you. just being yourself is a, a big thing. And also being kind. Uh -huh. Choose to be kind. Choose to be that person. And, and that's what I said to my son. I said, sometimes people are not necessarily going to be kind to you, but we choose to be kind. Sometimes it's going to hurt your feelings and that's okay to walk away. Um, and again, like you, you, know, you said it before, if I come home and I start talking bad about somebody, that's not being kind. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the key to kindness. You choose to be kind, even if some, and you're, we run into those um, people often because we have kids in school, we have, you know, you work and, but it's okay just to walk away and focus on really what matters. And it's like you said, the, the friendships, um, your marriage, um, your, your kids and your work, uh, regardless just be a kind uh, person because even if you're negative, it's not going to change anything, right? And to be feeling the the feeling um, very blessed and the gratitude—that's the gratitude because we forget that we need to be grateful for those friendships, and we need to be grateful for the moms in your life. We need to be grateful for our children. If you're grateful for these things then more good friendships are going to come in your life. Or those will continue to grow and be nourished, the ones that you have. Uh, you said something to me when I had just gotten married. Mm. You've, been married for, you've been married longer than me. Um, and way, way longer than me. And I, um, I want to share that because I think that was very powerful for me to hear from you. And I think that applies to making new friendships. Do you remember? You have a hint of what I'm going to say. Are you like? Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for you to say it. I was complaining to Lucy about my husband, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know what he's thinking. Like, honestly, I think that, well, maybe I'm not, I'm, I'm assuming I'm speaking for myself. I think that couples go through an adjustment period when they just get married. And I was just hating on Chris for a little bit. Um or like on like understanding what was going on and what did I, I say I said he doesn't realize that the things you are he, he does he doesn't know that what he's doing is actually hurting you or why don't you talk about it and I said instead of talking to me about it just it, it doesn't mean to hurt you it doesn't mean to hurt your feelings so you need to talk about that And even better, you said to me, always assume, always assume that he's not doing any of the things he's doing to hurt you. Okay. And I was like, what? Well, it's fucking life changing. Because I was always assuming that he was doing the thing to hurt me. Oh, he's staying late to piss me off. Or he's not doing this thing. And like one, I hadn't obviously properly communicated what I wanted or needed. But also, I was definitely assuming that he didn't care or that he was after, like, like his purpose was to not be in my same team, essentially. And I know that we do this with our friendships. We assume that if the friend is not calling us, it must be because they don't care about us. And we completely dismiss the fact that perhaps they're going through a hard time themselves. Perhaps they're just thinking and not realizing, like, uh, that they need help. Or... So, so like, I like this advice so much because I think that if we were all to, and it, you reminded me by saying, just be kind. I think that if we were all to assume that, that our friends, whether we talk to them once a year or every day, never, us, never like never mean to hurt us. Because how many people actually mean to hurt us? Let's be honest. How many people are out there targeting us, especially our friends, our relatives, our partners? But I mean, I'm, there is abusive relationships out there. So if you're listening to this, it might be the case for you. But if you're not in an abusive relationship, if, you, if you're listening to this and you're thinking like, it's true, I always assume the worst. I always assume like, motherfucker, why is he doing this? As if, as if he's intending it. And, and my husband always says, I'm in the same team. I'm always in your team. <laughs> Don't think I'm against you. I'm not trying to score a goal in your net. We're like, this is our team. We're like in the same, 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 same uh, net. So if, if you're making new friends, your brain can operate against you by telling you they're not interested. Look, you sound like an idiot when you talk to them, and especially in those earliest stages when you're trying to make new friends, whether it's because your kids share the sport. Um, right now I'm making new friends at, at my son's preschool. And it's so awkward because there's only like 10 students in the classroom. So it's like, it's not a large group. And sometimes I feel in larger groups, you're like less obvious. <laughs> When there's a small group, you're talking to one, everybody else hears that you're talking to one. And 
there are those moments that are a little bit awkward where your brain is like, oh my God, you're not French. Everybody else is French. Like that's my brain. They're going to want to speak in French and they're going to have to speak English because you're sitting in the room. Like I used to use this against me. Whereas now I'm not, I'm not assuming that people want to not, for me to not be there. <laughs> I just assume everybody means the best. They're going to love me once they meet me. I am so enjoyable to be around. And how can I break the thoughts that separate me in those moments that may make me assume that they're, they're not in my same thing, that they're also not awkward moms and parents standing there like, it would be great to have new friends that have children going to the same school, but how do we do this thing? We're so awkward about making new friendships as adults. We make it awkward with our brains. So do as my friend Lucy says and assume that they're in your same team and communicate with them. I like going for coffee. Do you enjoy coffee? Great. You don't enjoy coffee? Okay. What about golf? Do you like golf? That's amazing. Yeah, or simply going to the park where there's no obligation, you know, like just setting up a play date, you know, sometimes if you want to become friends with some of the parents and just suggest to share numbers and let's, let's meet at the park at that. Like when I started going to play group, that's how we kind of did that. Like I started going to parks and then the kids would meet there or so, and then, or like, um, and, and, and again, I think we need to go back to doing some of these things because things have changed and well did change, but I think it's okay to say, you know what, let's go back to doing some of these things you know just like the kids are doing more activities they are registering them for you know activities or you know my daughter's saying well I really want to play with you know one of the girls on her team so there's there's that too it's a, a, you know it cultivate and it in the earth like both of us right like so sometimes it's about the kids but also about us what us. I want to hang out with the, the kids whose parents I love, <laughs> like that I want to hang yes. out. With. But uh, on on taking action, on being authentic, on doing the thing, us creating new friendships, I want you to think about how taking action might feel uncomfortable for you. But how do you feel when somebody else takes action? How does that make you feel? Because sometimes we think like, oh my god, am I gonna? Be the mom? I'm asking for the phone number. What are they gonna think? Are they going to think if I say, let's exchange numbers? They're going to think I'm crazy. And I did that this summer. I asked my mom, like, we live in the same neighborhood. Why don't you just give me your phone number? And we'll hang out this summer with the kids. And right after I said it, I was like, was that awkward? Did I, was that like, it seemed a little bit surprised. I was like, oh, did, should I, should not, should have I done this? But here's what happened one day to me. My son had been home with me for two years, going to the, 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 par- the park. And our nanny at the time was taking him. And then one day I got a text message and the text message was from my mom who said, listen, I'm always at the park and I see Jenny or your nanny coming with Mateo. And I like, I have a son, Liam and they're best buddies. And she sent me a photo and she said, I would love for us to, uh, for you to come over to the house because we live in a tiny little small, I guess, city. Could we call now in the city? I don't know. Extension of the city outside of the city. She says, come over one day for in our backyard. We, uh, they play, we drink wine. And I was like, did I just meet a friend? I have never even met. This is amazing. I think I have a new friend. And I was so excited that she reached out, but I can imagine how many people might've had that good idea, me included, and never executed on it <laughs> because what is this mom who's never come to the park, who doesn't even know who my kid is, going to think about me reaching out and inviting her over for wine? And we had a blast. I had I brought the bottle of wine. The kids jumped. In between them jumping and hitting and, like, fighting, we had great conversations. And we now have plans of going golfing together. <laughs> like So without the kids. So whenever you're feeling awkward about making, those, that, making that first action in, in a new friendship, just think about, How would that feel for you if it was the other person taking action? And it takes one person to take action. And most people will be relieved. Oh, thank God you reach out. I've always wanted to go out with another mom and just talk about it. And I'm sorry it's been so focused on mom. It doesn't have to be this way. But you under like children give an opportunity to make new friends without feeling awkward is what it is. But if you're new to your city, if you're new to your job, same thing. Just like, hey, I'm new here. Do you have a preference of restaurants? Which one will you 
well, what do you think are great? And where should I practice yoga in the city? And like, you know, invite them maybe to do any of these activities, like taking that first action. And I want to finish it with this last point that you and I talked about, Lucy, which was making the time. And you alluded to this earlier where we sat down and put it in the calendar. And it might sound stupid to some of you, but if we don't do it that way, five months go by before our brains are like, oh my God, Lucy, I haven't seen you. How long has it been? So making time for friendships. What does that look like? I have that idea of putting people in my calendar. Like it's my favorite. And I reach out to my friends and I'm like, hey, we haven't had our monthly meeting yet. (laughs) As if it was a work meeting. I put it in my calendar and it happens. And my cup gets filled. That's exactly. Or texting or there's a lot of different ways of communicating. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you know, it makes me feel good also to text and, you know, just reaching and, but also having those connected moments. So sometimes it's okay for me to pick up the phone and call you and just allowing yourself, like in having the discussion, I think really put back perspective um, on our friendship. And, you know, it, it, it's like that for everything too, right? When you think about it, it's like you live with your children, but if you're not making the time to be with them or if they're on the tablet all the time, you know, the same thing with your husband or and I've said that my husband travels a lot, but sometimes it's a good thing because when we have so much to talk about, it nourishes our relationship. So it's the same thing about friendship, reaching out and taking the time. That's that's the key. And I, I have to put it in because especially they say that the days sometimes when you're really busy, the, the days are long, but the years are short because the years go by and then you you realize, oh my God, it's already been 10 years. Or, you know, so we have to remember that. Just taking the time because, because it's a lot more important than we realize to have those strong connections because it transpires to everything that we do uh, in life as well. How you feel. And I think that's my other point. Not only making the time, but then do not postpone it. Right, like one of your texts this morning was like, are we still on for the podcast? And we have gotten that tendency, I think, to double check with people, to leave them an out, give them an out, because we ourselves, and and I have another friend, Steph, who I also became friends once we became moms, because because our babies are the same age. So we went for walks and it was COVID and it felt like sanity to just go out for walks with our babies. And we've decided that once a month we're going out a night out to have supper and maybe a glass of wine and just chat. And we might be gone for a couple of hours tops, but it's life. We love it. We never speak on the phone. We never text. We just do this one thing. This is what we do. That's our thing. And one of our commitments was that even when we saw that showing up in the calendar, that we're not going to move it, that we're not going to cancel it, that we're not going to say, it would have been great, but uh, my husband was traveling and he's back today. Like, prioritize something else and it's worked so well for us because our brain wants to what we both said like oh my god I was saying I don't think I have time I'm so tired I don't think I can do it but every time we leave after that supper we're like high five we did it and we feel amazing so your brain might want to skew you from doing the thing that even you committed with time and it's in your calendar but then you want to get out of it and you can't it's just a friend like it's not prioritizing yourself at the end of the day is what you're doing You're insisting that you don't count. That's not important because it's only for you. And as friends, we've become really accepting of it. (laughs) Last minute cancellation, no problem. Sure, move on. So now I'm like a little bit more upset when my friends cancel last minute. I'm like, no, man, we had this plan. I don't feel important when you cancel last minute. And so I'm requesting three-day notice. <laughs> three-day notice. Actually, I want you to show up, show up. And I am being that person because I used to cancel last minute for so many things. So unless I'm sick, I'm not canceling. I'm going. That's just what I want to do. Um, and so, yeah, those those were our points, our coffee sh- chat that we're having. We're recreating here for you guys to hear two friends talking about the impact of friendship. And I love, Lucy, you said it impacts everything else in your life. When, you're, when your social cup, when your friendship cup is filled, 
you feel confident. You feel like there's somebody in your corner that you can call and be like, I was so stupid today. You want to hear what I did? And they're going to laugh with you, at you, and it's okay. I don't know. I, it feels like a, an extended family that we're choosing to have. Well, thank you for inviting me for this uh, podcast. Thank you for coming. And you're going to have to come back. As you guys can hear, Lucy's all about the children and how how to educate them because that's her job and she's brilliant at it. And thanks to that that conversation she had with her son, her and I had a whole episode here to record for you. So thank you, Lucy. Thank you. We'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. Bye, everyone. See you next Monday.